This covers most of the binomial expansion skills that you need for A-level maths. Um, we can look at three examples, the red, the blue and the green ones there. So pause if you want to continue looking at those. I'm going to press on. So the first question, we just got to raise this one to the power of 4. Now that power is a positive integer. So we can use what I call the year 1 or the AS level. Um, easy binomial expansion. Um, so it's the f we're going to need the fourth row of Pascal's triangle, 14641. I'm going to write that out as a column. This is the best way to do these problems. So because you've got three different kind of patterns going on. You've got the binomial coefficients. Then you've got the first um, term in the bracket to a series of descending powers. So 3 to the 4, 3 to the 3, 3 to the 2, 3 to the 1, and if you want, 3 to the power 0, but of course that's just equal to 1. And then the second term, including the negative in the, in the bracket, to a series of increasing powers starting from 0. Again, you don't need the 0 one, but it helps to see the whole pattern there. Great, and then your final answer is just the sum of each of these rows as, as products. So 1 times 3 to the power 4 times 1 is just 3 to the power 4, which is 81. And the next term, we've got 4 times 27 times negative 2, x. Then we've got 6 times 9 times minus 2 times minus 2, which is going to be positive. Um, again, 216 x squared. And then just keep going and we get the whole thing there and then we finish and that's it. Now sometimes in these problems they ask you to only give a particular term in the expansion or the coefficient of a particular term. Um, in that case, just identify which term it is they want. Let's say for example they wanted um, the x cubed term. Well, you just do the same thing but you only do this row here. So you know you're going to have to be raising um, the minus 2x to the power of 3, and that means we must be raising the um, other term, the 3 in this case, to the power 1, because the powers have to add up to 4. And then this binomial coefficient here is either 4c1 or 4c3. In both cases, they give you the value 4. So it's easy enough to do if you just need one term. Okay, let's look at question 2. This time we have a power which is a non-positive integer. If it's anything other than a positive integer, you have to use the year two binomial expansion method, which is similar but different. I think it's best thought of as a different process, to be honest. Um, right, this ugly looking thing is in the formula book. Now, if this is useful to you in the formula book, then you simply haven't done enough practice with binomial expansion. Because having to use this formula simply means that you don't really know what you're doing. It's much easier to learn the pattern and just apply the pattern from memory than trying to decipher this weird looking formula. And the way to do that is this. You first have to identify that we have a 1 here. If you don't have a 1 there, you have to do something else first. That's what we'll do in the next slide. If you've got a 1 here, then the first term here is just a 1. Great. The second term you get by multiplying the power by this term here. So three x, positive 3x times positive 3 over 2, which is 9 over 2x. And then it gets a bit more interesting. Then we have to do this. So I've taken the power, I've times it by 1 less than the power, and divide by 2 factorial, and then positive 3x all squared. You do need these brackets. Now watch how that pattern continues now. Um, we just did the original power times 1 less than the power, divided that by 2 factorial. Now we do the original power times 1 less than that power, times 1 less still, divided by 3 factorial. So original power, take away 1 is half, take away 1 is minus a half, times all those together, divide by 3 factorial. And then we have the 3x turn to the power 3. 
etc. I'm going to do another one. The next one is going to be original power times a half times minus a half times minus 3 over 2. We have to keep going down 1 each time. And now we're going to divide by, you guessed it, 4 factorial. And then it's going to be brackets 3x to the power 4. And of course that then continues as well. But you will never have to go on forever for obvious reasons. The examiner will tell you to stop usually at the square term or the cubic term. You very rarely need to go to the power 4 term. And then you just have to simplify each of those. So first two already simplified. Um, just be really careful typing the numbers into your calculator. You've got, um, you can you can actually do this in your head if you think about it, but I do this bit on your calculator and then times it by nine, because that's three squared, isn't it? Um, and just do that for all the other ones. Okay, great. Okay, so the um, before you go any further, you should write down what the expansion's valid for. So these, this, this year two method only works for specific values of x. And it's whatever's here, in this case 3x, in absolute value brackets, and that has to be less than 1. You can sort of see that here. It's mentioned in the formula book. Whatever that thing is there has to be less than 1, uh, or the size of it, the magnitude of it has to be less than 1. So in other words, it has to be between minus 1 and 1. Now, you can't leave your validity like this. You have to divide by 3 and leave it like that. Or you can put it as x is trapped between minus a third and a third if you want. Brilliant. Right, let's do the um, let's do the final problem here. So we're going to be expanding that thing there up to and including the x cubed term. And then we, we're going to go a bit further than that. We're going to use our expansion to try to find approximations to those two expressions there. So firstly, the uh, normal expansion. Well, note that we do not have a 1 here. If we had a 1 there, we could just go straight forward into the expansion. We can't do that here. We have to get a 1 there. So first note that 4 minus 3x can simply be written 4 brackets 1 minus 3 quarters of x. And then if we wrap the brackets around those and put a power minus 2, we can state that as a mathematical truism. We can then apply this power minus 2 to both the 4 and this inside bracket, which is what I've done there. And then lastly here, um, just note that 4 to the power minus 2 is a 16th. Now we have something we can expand using the binomial expansion method, um, which is the, the, this bracket here to the power minus 2. And then just times our answer by 1 over 16 to get the correct expansion for the original problem. So 1 minus 3 quarters x to the power minus 2. Let's go through the process that we did on the last slide. Uh, here it goes. Um, we're going to do a 1 to begin with. Then we can remember we're going to multiply the minus 2 by this whole thing here, including the negative, which will give us positive 3 over 2x. And then just, I'm going to whiz through this process so I don't take too long, but hopefully you can sort of see and pause the video or slow it down if you need to, to make sure you understand where what I've just written there comes from and what I've just written there comes from as well. I don't need the plus dot 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 because it does tell us just to go up to the x cubed term, but I like to put it on anyway. And then simplify each of those terms separately and we get that. And then we need to remember multiply by the 16th to finish off our process. So that whole thing there is equal to a 16th of the expansion we just did, which is that. And we're going to note the validity of that. Remember, the validity is the bit we expanded. So some people make the mistake here. They go to this bit and go, well, it's absolute value brackets of 3x less than 1. No, we didn't expand this green thing using binomial. We expanded this black thing here using binomial. So this gives us our validity range. So in absolute value brackets, 3 over 4, x needs to be less than 1, and if we times by 4 and divide by 3 in that inequality, we get mod x has to be less than 4 thirds. Great, we're nearly there. Let's start a new slide. I'm just going to copy the results that we need. So 
So we now know that that um, we now know the full expansion and the validity range for four minus three x all to the power minus two. I'm going to use that to find an approximation to three point eight five to the power minus two. So we've got something to the power minus two, something to the power minus two. So those two somethings must be equal, right? So four minus three x must be equal to three point eight five because they're both to the power minus two. So 4 minus 3x is 3.85, that rearranges to give us x is 0 0.05. And that is valid, isn't it? Because that's in our validity range here. 0 0.05 is much smaller than 1.3 recurring. So we can just substitute that value into our expansion here. Now show that, show that substitution really explicitly. So I've just replaced all the x's with 0 0.05. And now I need to calculate each of those terms individually, write out the full calculator display, and then add them up, and that's it. Now it's worth noting um, that that is a pretty good approximation, because if you actually type 3.85 to the power minus 2 into your calculator, press equals, you get this value here, which you might note is actually, um, well you'll note that our approximation is equal to the real value up to the fifth decimal place. So, okay, this expansion should go on forever. We've truncated it after only four terms, and yet we've got a value that's incredibly accurate to um, 100 thousandths level. Okay, last problem then. Um, let's just, again, rewrite uh, the stuff we need. So we've got our expansion of four minus three x to the power minus two validity range, and this time we're using our expansion to find an approximation to 43 to the power minus 2. Now, here's where you've got to be very careful, because if we try the same method that we used before, and we set 43 equal to 4 minus 3x, that gives us a value of x which is not valid, it's not in our validity range, so we cannot substitute that into this. So we're stuck. And you've got to do a rather awkward little adjustment here. Now, if this, this is how you've got to think about this. If this was not four take away three lots of something, but instead 40 take away something, take away a negative, then that's a bit closer, isn't it? It's 40 is a closer starting point than four, isn't it, to get to 43. So here's the trick. We're just going to force it to be a 40 instead to begin with and see what happens. So what if we started with 40 minus 30x to the power minus 2? What I've done there effectively is multiplied everything in the bracket by 10. Well, if we go through the process of trying to create a 1 here again, as we did before, I'm going to factor out 10. Um, obviously, it's going to be to the power minus 2 as well. And that gives us 1 hundredth of 4 minus 3x to the power minus 2. So in other words, the expansion of this thing here is one hundredth of the expansion of the original um, 4 minus 3x to the power minus 2. So we can say that 40 minus 30x to the power minus 2 can be written as this row here at the bottom of the screen, which is one hundredth of the same expansion I've got here. That's just been copied into here. Great. Now we go through the um, the process should work now. So we're going to say if forty minus sorry if forty three is equal to forty minus thirty x, and rearrange that we get x is minus zero point one, which is now in the validity range, and we just go through the process of substituting that now into um, into this. So it's going to be a hundredth of all of that. Just replace all the x's with minus 0.1. Expand them all carefully, writing down all the figures on your calculator display. And then final answer is that. And again, you might want to note uh, how that compares to the exact value. Uh, if you type 43 to the power minus 2 into your calculator, you get this thing here, which is correct to, I think, um, the sixth decimal place 
um, or three significant figures. Again, pretty good approximation. And that's essentially all you need to know about binomial expansion. There's one more thing I haven't covered here, which is about the percentage error. But you can look that up, uh, just Google it. How do you find percentage error in a binomial uh, expansion or a binomial approximation? Thanks for listening.